So I had a family member call me a month or so ago to ask me where I saved their past year's tax return at when I helped submit it for them online. Well, on your computer. They can't find it. My mom called recently and said she had a couple of USB drives full of old photos that she would love to access somehow and keep safe. My mobile phone is full. Where do I dump the photos to free space? What if my kids or wife want to see them? Well, these situations come up again and again. So I've decided to deploy my own little secure family cloud in my private home network where we can all access these important files 24 seven. And that is what this video is about today. We're going to one, install Nextcloud all in one on a server in my home. Nextcloud is a very popular content collaboration platform that's highly customizable, has lots of integrations and add-ons, and is essentially your own cloud with data that you control. Number two, we'll set up accounts for each family member so they can individually access the cloud as well. And then three, we'll set up secure remote access using TwinGate so that we all can access it as needed, secure securely from anywhere. And the benefit here is that there will be complete privacy for your files and photos, no cloud subscription fees, you'll have scalable storage capacity, full control over data access and sharing permissions, and most importantly, a central hub for family collaboration that works across all devices. So annual family vacation photos, family recipes, a shared calendar of important family events, old heirloom photos digitized, there are services out there that will digitize them for you. Your child's artwork, the cases are endless. So if that interests you, let's get started. I'll walk you through every step. So what you're looking for here is Nextcloud All-in-One, which provides us with an easy deployment. Now, one thing that we do need to note is that Nextcloud requires a domain. Some people use it publicly by buying a domain and pointing it to their home IP address via an A record. I personally do not like exposing my home network to the public web. A better alternative is to buy a domain and use a reverse proxy that would issue a DNS01 challenge to verify that you own the domain and then could generate a trusted real TLS cert to use in your private network. This is the ideal scenario in the scenario many people go with. But I don't want to assume that you want to buy a domain and set all that up. Since we are in a private home network, we're instead gonna also deploy Caddy, which is a reverse proxy, but have it generate us a self-signed certificate for whatever domain we want. So first, you'll need a server to run this on. For demonstration today, I'll be using this simple B-Link mini PC running Ubuntu. And you do need to install Docker. If you don't have that, just go to Google, type in Docker on Ubuntu, click on that, scroll down the page. And here you have two steps. Set up the Docker's apt repository, so just run these commands. And then number two, install the Docker packages. Just run this command and you're done. Next, we'll begin with the official compose file in their GitHub repo. So just type in nextcloud all in one, go to their GitHub repo, and you'll see a file called compose.yaml. Open that up, copy this file, and then open it in a code editor of your choice. I'm gonna use VS Code and paste that in. So this is kind of a starter template that they give you to work with. And we're just gonna change a few things here. Since we are gonna be using a reverse proxy, we can alter this according to the comments. So you see here, it can be removed when running behind a web server or reverse proxy. So we can remove port 80, port 8443, and just leave 8080. Next, we wanna go down in this environment section uncomment that. And again, we see this instruction, if you're running a reverse proxy, then this is needed. So let's uncomment the Apache port in the Apache IP binding. Just leave it as is. The Apache port tells Nextcloud's internal Apache server to use port 11,000 instead of the standard ports. And then the Apache IP binding tells Nextcloud's Apache to only listen to connections from the local machine where Caddy is running, not from the outside world, which also adds an extra layer of security. And then finally, we wanna go down and uncomment this skip domain validation. And we wanna set it to true. Why? Well, this will allow us to skip the mandatory domain validation that Nextcloud does. We don't have a real domain, we haven't verified it, it's not public, and Nextcloud is going to fail us. Which is fine, because our domain will work via a self-signed certificate after the fact. So we're gonna set this to true. Next, they provide us with this caddy service. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uncomment this entire service, along with the configs, just uncomment all of that, and the four volumes down here, uncomment that. So this Docker Compose file is also going to run Caddy. All of this is fine. The only thing we need to change is in the Caddy file. So instead of cloud.example.com, put in whatever domain you want to use. I'm gonna call it family.cloud. 
Once you do that, there's one more piece to add to this. We're gonna tell Caddy to handle the certificate for us. This will be a self-signed certificate. And to do that, we just need to put TLS internal. That's it. And once you've done that, you are all set. Copy this, SSH into the server that you wanna deploy this on. So this is again, my B-Link machine running Ubuntu. And I'm gonna create a folder for this. So make their next cloud, CD next cloud. And I'll do a sudo vi compose.yaml. We're gonna create this file and paste in the contents we just changed. Once that's pasted in, save it. And we're done here. Now, before we actually deploy this, we'll need to add this domain, this domain that we're making up to our local DNS. Remember, this isn't a real domain that you bought or that's public, but it's one that just works locally in your home network only. So you'll need to add this as an A record to your local DNS. So I'm using Pi-hole in my home lab, and I use that as my DNS server. So I can add an A record there. So if I open up Pi-hole and go to settings and local DNS records, I can set family.cloud as my domain and have that map to the IP address of my host machine that's running Caddy. And with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and deploy this. To deploy it, just do a docker compose up detached to run that compose file. Once that's done, you wanna visit the IP address of that machine that you deployed it on. So for me, that's 192.168.1.111. Colon port 8080. So the IP address of the machine you deploy that on with port 8080. Hit enter and make sure your HTTPS. Accept the risk and continue. And you're in the next cloud all in one setup. So you want to take this passphrase, write it down somewhere, keep it safe, but also copy it. Go to the next screen, paste in that passphrase. Make this a little bigger. Click login. Now I need to enter my domain, but note that the domain validation is disabled, so any domain will be accepted here. So I could put anything here, but we need to put the domain that we set because our self-signed cert will be for that. So the domain you put in your caddy file, put here. I put family.cloud and then click submit domain. And then you get to this install page. So you're gonna install Nextcloud Hub 10, and there's also some optional containers. You can look through this. I'm gonna uncheck Nextcloud Office and Nextcloud talk and just leave imaginary and whiteboard. Save those changes, install Nextcloud Hub 10 and download and start containers. To click this and it's gonna take at least, you know, three, four minutes. And after that spinner swirls for a little bit, you'll get to the screen and this will tell you when everything's finally ready. So you'll see there's a couple of containers that are still yellow and they're still in the starting status. So we'll give it a few more minutes. Once that's complete, you can grab your Nextcloud password. So the username is going to be admin. Grab this password and click open in Nextcloud. Again, accept the risk and continue. And you're in your Nextcloud application. Type in admin, paste in that password, and log in. And as far as that, accept the risk and continue. If we check out our certificate, so I'm gonna go up here, uh, connection not secure, more information. We'll see here that this certificate is verified by Caddy Local Authority. So it's self-generated and it works for our private deployment. All right, first things first, let's go up to our profile. So it should be A for admin probably. And let's go to accounts. And let's create a new admin account for us. So new account. I'm gonna put Travis, display name Travis, and let's add a password. And a member of the following groups, admin. So I'm just creating myself an admin account. Click add new account. And now I have an account. Next, I'll go back to accounts and add a new group. And I'll call this group family. And then we can add a member of the family, like I can add my son, Ben. Give him a password. And he's a member of the following group family. And I can go and do this for all members of my family that want to access this private cloud. And then maybe another for mom. Give her a password, member of family and add new account. 
and we just continue like this. And then they can go back and add new files. So we can add files and share files between each other. We can add photos. Here's some stock photos that they put in there, but we can create folders, albums, whatever, and collaborate here. So they're all set up, but it only works on our private home network. How can our family members access it? Well, we'll use Twingate for this. Twingate will allow them to access this private cloud from their phone, laptop, whatever, from anywhere. And it does so without having to expose your private network to the public web. No inbound setup is required. So if you haven't used Twingate, go to twingate.com, click on try Twingate for free and sign up. Just follow the prompts to create your network. And once you're in your admin panel, actually before we set this up, I'm gonna to go to team and groups and I'm gonna add a new group called family. Add that group. Okay, let's set this up. So the first thing you wanna do, go back to network. The first thing you wanna do is create a remote network. This is just a logical separation of resources here in Twingate. So I'm gonna call this family cloud. I'm gonna put on premise family cloud and add remote network. Next, I need to deploy a connector within my private network. So if I click on family cloud, which I just created, and we'll see by default, two connectors were created when I created this remote network. These are not deployed anywhere, they were just created. So I'm gonna actually delete one as I don't need high availability in my setup. And I'm gonna change this name to Family connector. And again, this connector is just here, ready to be deployed. So let's select that connector. And I'm just gonna deploy this as a Docker container on the same machine that's running Nextcloud. There's a number of other options here like Helm, Linux, Terraform, but I'm gonna choose Docker. I'm gonna scroll down and generate some tokens. So click generate tokens, which asks you to authenticate again. So I've chosen Docker, I've generated the tokens. I can further customize this Docker command, but as I keep scrolling down, I have this command laid out for me. So my tokens have been added, my network name is added, it's all ready to go. So all I need to do is click copy command, go back to my server and deploy the connector in my private network as a Docker container. Great, now we should see it turn green and it's already green. The controller is connected and the relay is connected. So we have our remote network, family cloud. We've deployed our connector in our private environment. And now we just need to add the resource. So let's go back to remote networks, click on resources and click plus. As a label, I'm gonna say next cloud. And for address, we can just put in family.cloud because that's what works on our machine. And I can restrict the ports, I can add alias. I'm just gonna leave as is and click create resource. Oops, I need to select a remote network because I have two of them. I need to select family cloud as this is gonna be a resource in the family cloud network and click create resource. And remember we created this family group. So let's grant access to the people in that family group only. And we're all set. Again, you have a remote network, you've deployed a connector in your private network, and you've added the Nextcloud resource available to anyone in the family group. Now I can go and download the Twingate app for this example on my phone. You'll see that I'm not connected to my home network and I just need to log in. So make sure I'm on the right network, yes. Sign in and connect, sign in with Google. And you'll see that I have no resources in my app. Why? Because I'm not part of the family group. Forgot to do that. So let's go back to team, click on my name, Go down to groups and add to group family. And there it is, next cloud. So again, I'm not connected to my home network, but I can click on this, copy the address and paste that in my browser. And there I can log in on my phone. But what about my parents or my kids? Well, let's add them as users to our Twingate network so that they can also use the app from anywhere to access this cloud. So I'm gonna go back to team and users, and I'm just gonna click user. And I'll type in the email of a family member and I can send them an invite email or I can add the user without an invite email. Let's just do that. And they've been invited. Let's open the user and go down to groups and make sure they're added to the family group. And that's it. They can now go and download the Twingate app on their phone, their laptop, whatever, log in to our network and access the cloud from anywhere.
So your cloud is private, it's accessible by those you allow without needing to create any inbound rule in your private network. If you have any questions, as always, leave a comment or jump over to our subreddit, link below, and ask away there. Thanks for watching.